friends, I'm Neethi the Pharmacist. Welcome to my food church. So I've had people say to me over the years, Neethi, you really need somebody to just follow you around with a camera because the information that we talk about in the food church is so valuable for everyone to hear. Even all the members don't hear it because I'm having these conversations with individuals throughout the day. Um, all week long. And, you know, a lot of people that come um, to the food church are not interested in being uh, on camera. And so, you know, in an effort to protect everybody's anonymity, and still be able to share these conversations that we feel like would benefit everybody. Um, I decided that I would just put a mic on and record uh, conversations that I'm having. So when you're listening to this, um, it might be that we started a conversation and then I decided, oh, I really should record this. And so, you know, it might sound like you're just kind of walking into a conversation or a discussion. And I'm not editing this because I don't really have time to do all that. So I thought that it was still meaningful enough um, for folks to, you know, possibly be interested in listening to it. So these are conversations that I'm having real time with real people in the food church. And I'm just recording them. And if they are of any benefit to you, then, you know, tune in. I'm going to call the series, you know, uh, Candid Conversations candid conversations. Um, and I'll just list it like that and just do maybe candid conversation one. (laughs) I might put the dates. I'm not sure, um, how I'm going to, how I'm going to organize this exactly, but yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy this series. And if, um, if you could please, you know, give me thumbs up or something, um, make some comments, let me know, participate in the conversation, give us something more to talk about. Um, because whatever you comment, I can take that back to the same people and let them know, hey, when I posted this conversation, you know, these are the reactions of the people. And so um, if you're interested in participating with us, you know, that would be how you would do that. But yeah, I didn't, you know, it's like I spend so much time doing this and it's for you for the past 15 years, haven't recorded any of them. So (laughs) I guess we're getting a little late start on that, but um, I don't know, hopefully this is uh, valuable for you guys and you enjoy it. Um, So yeah, welcome to the series of Candid Conversations. Okay, so let's let's try to figure out where this is. So what we're doing is we're trying to establish your PARs. People don't know what their PARs are because they've never had to know what their PARs are. Which is a PAR, the PAR means how what's your consumption? What is the consumption? Right. And how much to shop for? So for chicken, people don't understand how much chicken they eat because look, if you have four drumsticks in a pack, you have four thighs in a pack. That's just two four packs at Bojangles. Right. And most people go to Bojangles and for their family of four will get three eight piece dinners, right? Right. I mean, is that am I wrong about that? No. Yeah, so if you're getting three eight pieces, then this is just two birds. And then people try to tell me that this is enough chicken for their family for the month, which I know is a blatant lie. Because this is only two breasts. This is only two breasts, this is four thighs, and this is four drums, and four tenders, and four wings. That is not enough food. This this right here is a uh, four, eight, twelve, twelve piece. This is a picnic yeah. from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right. Right? So this whole thing is gone. I never, I guess in my mind, I was thinking a half a chicken should be fine. But there's, I've got three kids and my husband and I. So that, when I made that, it did not work out. <laughs> right. Everybody still needs. I was food. like, well, this is mine, and what are you going to eat? 
Right. And I had to make right. something else. So, um, okay. Yeah. So now we're trying to figure out what you need in a month, right? Right. So if you use these backs in the broth kit, that is going to make you a gallon and a half of broth. And then this is where people get overwhelmed. When they come pick up and they get a whole bunch of backs and broth kits, then they're just like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, why don't you go home and put that in the fridge so that tomorrow or whatever, as soon as possible, you just need to make broth. Yeah. And all that requires, because we've done all the work. Yeah. Like all you literally do is take all that stuff, put it in a crock pot, fill it with water and salt and go to bed. Right. And then the next day it's done. And you take it out and you strain all this stuff out and you can throw it out if you want to. And, you know, you have to use a strainer to oh, yeah. fill the jars so you clean your broth, okay? So is strain on, it. Is this on your video? I don't have a video. I think there's, I think there's a video of me doing something. I don't know. Uh, there's definitely a conversation about how to make broth. But I don't know. In your spare time, <laughs> have a video. <laughs> okay. Your video requests are a good thing for you to email to Jaya okay. because she's supposed to help me ma maintain content trouble. and make sure that... Hey, Jaya, go help him find those other coffees too because we have the ones that he wants. I'm so visual. If I can watch you do this, right. I think I could do it. Just oh, fine. it's easy. It's literally emptying packages into a thing and putting water in it. You're not stupid. Like You can totally do it. It's very simple. There's nothing to it. The only thing that I was telling you about these chicken backs is I reward myself for making the broth by making myself carnivore crisps. Yeah. So I take all the skin off the backs because there's more skin on there than anything because it's all the skin from the backs, I mean, from the breasts and everything. And so it's like a whole big sheet of chicken skin. Okay. And there is nothing more delicious than fried chicken skin. So I take that whole Glimmer thing. Glimmer in your eyes. I know. Oh, my gosh. It is delicious. And we fry it in our pork lard. Girl, yeah. that's better than potato chips. Okay. And it's so filling. I need a video. <laughs> All right. You need I to. I need a video. Okay, so you're going to send an email, world. right? You're going to send her the email about I will. the videos. Okay. So. This so my par is right now we're thinking four, but maybe more. Well, know? what I'm saying is that this is your picnic from Kentucky Fried Chicken or Bojangles. Right. So that's only two chickens. That's nothing. Right. People don't understand when they go to Bojangles or whatever that their family of four is eating two and a half to three birds. Right. They just don't think so. And the only thing extra is that. Right. And that you're going to make your broth with. So you can put these in a grocery bag on that shelf in your cooler like we talked about. Okay. You know, how to organize the, the ice chest. But then if you do that, you're going to get lazy and you just won't get it. But if you take it home and you put it right away, then you can make your broth. And when your broth is made, then you're just going to cook it and use it and drink it. And Yeah. You know, if it's how done. How long does the broth last in the... Thank you. When you put it in your ball jars, yeah. then while it's hot, it's going to heat seal. So you'll hear as this, the cans are sealing. Okay. And then you can just keep them in the bottom of your fridge. Okay. And they'll stay good in the back of the fridge for up to six or eight weeks. I don't know. Nice. I don't know. Mine don't last that long because we usually, you know, we'll yeah, use correct. them for whatever. And, and you use bone broth for, because I just drink it, but right. you use it for cooking. Well, I, I use it for soup. cooking if I'm cooking stuff for, like, we have family come over and I'm making them something. But, you know, we're not eating rice and all that stuff. That's right. Okay. So, But if I am going to make rice, then I'm going to make it with broth. I'm not going to make it with water. Right. Okay. I'm also going to soak my rice and all these other 10 hundred things. Also, I don't think anybody needs to eat rice, but, you know. <laughs> okay. We're okay. from India. I have Indian family. They come over. I cook for them. Right. So... You know, also we have Puerto Rican family and we cook Puerto Rican food too. So, I mean, I'm definitely making rice when people come over. And so I need broth for it. Anyway, this part of the chicken, which is the main subscription, if this is your Bojangles, how many times in a month do you want that? That's what I was saying. Like for us, we do this once a week. This right, is at right. least one day a week. Right. So... If we're going to do that, that means four a month for us, or I would just have this every week. You can have it as a weekly subscription, too. That way you're not bombarded with a whole bunch of it all at one time. So that was the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, is you can get cut-up chicken every week 
Okay. You can pay another dollar a pound more and not get that every week. So monthly, you could get one of these. Weekly, you can get just this. So this is not on a piece of paper okay. anywhere, by the way. Okay. This is something I would have done in person with you. Okay. Because I think that you think that you're missing something that you're just going to tell you this, but it's not. Okay. I this see. is me telling you because you, mo I don't know anybody who will read this on a paper and understand. Right. Like they need to see it. Yeah. I'm and visual so, for sure. Right. I mean, if you don't see it, then you're just like, that sounds like a lot of chicken to me. <laughs> You know, yeah, and it's and it's really just not, but because you can see that now, right? Yep. yep. All right, and you know well, that I made because... that sad little half a chicken that was not enough for five people. You know, I guess if you think if you go to Costco and you get one of those um, chemical chickens, yeah, the road <laughs> history so chemical, good. yeah, yeah. But they, you know, you wouldn't buy half of one of those for your whole family, right? Your family would easily eat one of those, if not two, depending on how many adults and whatever. If you got boys too, yeah, that's right. If so, you got one man, like a real one, two, like, yeah. So that's it. If you think about that, I mean, we easily would go through that, and that would be like a light meal if I had one of those. My husband would be like, can I have a little something else with it? Right. So. Exactly. It's a light meal. Yeah. It's lunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think for me, I'm thinking I can use a lot of these for lunch meat kind of things. Exactly. Too, girls, exactly. So, I'm trying to think. so maybe. This is lunch meat. When people are like, where's your dilly cuts? I'm like, okay, this is the chicken. Yeah. And that is the ham. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else do you look for? Yeah. <laughs> you know, then you want roast beef. That would be a beef roast. You slow cook it, slice it, that's beef. How do you slice all this? Like, how do you, With like... a knife. Look, you can't get it, like, thin, like deli slice. Well, you can buy a mandolin. Okay. People use the mandolin to slice their zucchini. Why wouldn't you slice your chicken? I don't know. I just never Right, it. because okay. it's not on the box. Okay. It's not in the pictures. Okay. I'm just wondering if there's some machine I'm missing or something I it's should get. It's a cotton mandolin. mandolin. And okay. normally, I mean, you can buy the commercial deli slicer, which I would love to have in my house. Sure. I would, girl, I would use that all the time. For as much as you go through, yeah. Right. We go through tons of meat. I mean, yeah. I'm actually considering getting one, but I'm just waiting. When we move on our land, we'll have our, our kitchen. That's I'm going right. to totally have Set a it up slicer. For that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to get one of those also because I can get aged meat from folks on their farms where they're aging it for us. Yeah. So that we can have like sliced prosciutto and all this amazing See, stuff. See, that would be cool. Well, I'm working on it. Even just that with like, yeah. Well, I'm working on it, but you have a, you have the baseline of everything okay. that you need. Look, if you have this, you have a ham every week. Yeah. Like when people are not getting hams because they're waiting on Thanksgiving, I'm like, yo, you would go to the grocery store and buy ham. Right. <laughs> I don't understand. Right. And you would go to the deli counter and easily get half a pound of ham slices. Yep. So mm -hmm. what's one whole pound? Yep. Or you take that whole ham, which is only two pounds, slice it up, and put it in the freezer if you think that you don't want it all. Yep. But, like, if it's cut up and it's in your fridge, yep. you're going to eat it. Also, you can cut that in half. Yep. Only use half right now and refreeze the other half. So, look, a poor man's vacuum seal is press and seal wrap. So you take press and seal wrap, you dry the meat, make sure the meat's padded dry. Mm -hmm. The ham is nice and dry. Okay. And then you seal it with press and seal wrap, which sticks real well. Mm -hmm. That's just making sure that there's no freezer crystals gonna get on the meat, which would okay. just burn it, right? Right. So you wanna keep it dry and tight and airtight and just go crazy with it a little bit, a little extra okay. seal. And then take that and put it in a Ziploc freezer bag. Yeah. And then the bag is going to end up having ice in it, but not the meat because the meat's been protected. You see okay. what I mean? Okay. But if you do a good job, you can pull a lot of air out and minimize yeah, that sure. also. Okay. But I mean, if you're just keeping it in the freezer because you're going to use a ham every other week because you only need half a pound. Yeah. Then, or like in my case, what I do is I'll cook the whole thing. I'll slice the whole thing and I'll just do that every other week. And yeah. it actually is fine in the fridge because yeah. I don't like refreeze it or do anything, but we would have the leftover in the fridge for two weeks. Yeah. And people eat are eating off of it because it's cooked and it's 100% fine. Now, if your fridge is too hot or you don't keep it cold enough or I don't know something, or mm -hmm. somebody took that ham and they left it whole thing sitting out on the counter for very much too long or something, and there's it gets hot too much or too often, you just have to keep checking it. If some of it goes bad, then... That's why. Yeah. But 
generally our kids know like they'll pull something out make a plate and put the rest of it back yeah it's fine yeah and you can even take those ham slices and put them in a mason jar which keeps them even more fresh yeah than a ziploc bag and if it's in a jar in the fridge, it's fine too. Yeah. The other thing I like to do is take that and I'll dice some. I like take some of it and dice it. Yeah. And use those cubes to stir into chicken breasts or something okay. else. Or I make chicken salad with ham and chicken. Ah, so you take the diced ham okay. and some of this chicken. Like when it's when I feel like okay, we've had this for maybe it's going to be the last day or I don't know. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, okay, we're all bored of this this way. Yeah. We just need to make it something else. Yeah. So then I'll take a chicken breast and I'll take the ham. I'll cube and dice it all up. I'll put it together with my bacon -aise. And um, maybe you cook some bacon bits to add a little crunch to it just to make it crunchier or right. something. And then I'll just jar it. And then I'll be like, okay, guys, we got chicken salad. And... They will love that. That's another thing you can put in the kids' salad. lunch containers to take to school chicken is salad. the chicken salad, which would be cubed ham and uh, chicken breast. See, we're trying to come up with, I told them this summer, let's sit down and try to do, like, taco meat. We could do... But taco meat isn't good at school, but this is because it's cold. Like, these are things I'm telling you. Yeah. You can set up. They'll all just be in the fridge. The shrimp, right? You boil the shrimp. Just do, like, one prep night and let them like on Sunday you make chicken salad with the ham you also make ham slices you also make just chickens uh, medallions remember I told you mm -hmm. so you cook this in butter and Cajun seasoning or, or some something that you like Italian mm -hmm. whatever and then you pull it out and you when it cools then you slice it and you make medallions of chicken breast mm -hmm. I do the same thing with ham this is deli cuts okay mm -hmm. now you can fill your little uh, container um, you know, with just the chicken slices, just the deli slices, just the boiled shrimp, just the chicken salad, right? Okay. So you have all that stuff, and now you have all these containers in your freezer. Okay. Now it's time to go to school in the morning. They have a incredible meaty breakfast. Yep. They can maybe take two of those little things. Yep. Not, they, what else do they need for lunch? Like yeah. nothing. Yeah. They, I mean, they might, I don't know, maybe take a little cheese, a couple of cheese cubes. Yeah. Or something, but they yeah. really don't need anything else. Yeah. Okay. If they get bored of all of that, which usually kids don't, like, think about it. They would eat a Lunchable every day, all week long, every week. Isn't that what people were otherwise buying? I mean, I don't know what people get in the store, but. Thinking, how many of these do I need then? Four subscriptions? So I was saying to you, what if you got this weekly? I like the idea of just coming and getting it because if we are like this once a month, if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you me, want it monthly? I, I don't mind just putting it in the freezer. And then I just get in my routine to like make a bone broth once a week mm -hmm. and I, I'll, I'll drink that. Okay. It's comforting to me. So I Well, like not it. only that, but you can, you can use that broth, add any leftover meat to it. If you have taco yeah. meat leftover, you can add that to broth and now it's a taco soup. Okay. Any leftover meat you add to broth and it's soup. Yeah. So, yes, you, I mean, okay. if you don't know what to do with broth, just freaking add. You can also take broth. <laughs> Look, you make broth and you're warming it up in yeah. a pan. If you drop an egg into it and start whisking it, that's called egg drop soup. Oh. That's it. You add a little soy sauce to that, which we don't do soy, but, you know, we do the aminos. Yeah. So you just whisk that in. That is what egg drop soup is. Oh. Right. Okay. It, you well, dropped an egg into the soup, and you whisked it while it warmed up, and now you poured it in a bowl, and bam, you're a chef. I need ideas on what to cook. Okay, let's do this. Uh, let's do... Um, you want four of these a month? Yeah. Okay. But can I do one subscription that's like the halves, like how I have it? So maybe just leave that one and right. add three more of these a month. Okay, so you want three of these and one yeah. of that. Okay. So how does that work? Do I pick it up at the beginning of the month? Is there a special day? No. No. We're going to tell you when subs are ready. It's okay. different all the time. Oh, okay. We, it's, you, you get billed every fifth of the month, no matter what. Okay. And because we have to just have one bill day that we know that all the billings went through. Okay. And so all the subs get billed on the fifth and then the delivery is based on a million logistical issues. I've been doing everything that I can to try to make that the same week all the time, like every second, 
every second week because we do second Saturdays. Yeah. But for a long time, I wasn't getting deliveries or I couldn't get processing done on time. Yeah. There was a lot of chaos. And so at this point, I'm trying to stay a month ahead with my deliveries so that I can have all the subs on the same time. But then we're short with the rest of our food a la carte or something. Right. So I'm trying to find a logistical balance, which is, that's a different, uh, look, as long as we keep growing, I'm going to go through more chaos with that all the time. Yeah. And until we get to some scale where we can just have a whole lot of extra, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then it'll be different. I also need to walk, you know, we're looking for, there, that's a whole different thing. We're looking for land and blah, 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 all the things. So yeah. at this red hot minute, I'm going to write down what you want. And then this is me. Okay, so this goes through next April. Or yes, that's yeah. the commitment. So you're okay. making a commitment. Now, if you want to break your commitment, then it's two seventy-five a pound for everything that you got already. Because that's the difference in commitment. And that's the penalty, whatever. Because then you're not, why would you get a commitment discount per pound and you don't want to keep the commitment? Do you know what I mean? I feel like chicken won't eat, though. We'll yeah, that quite a bit. I mean, I don't see you not doing it. That's all I know. But you know what you want to make a commitment to. I'm not trying to talk you in or out of anything. Yeah. So we got one thing of splits. But that's already on there, I think. Right? I know. I'm just writing okay. it down. Okay. And three cut up monthly. So if we're out of town the 4th through the ninth. What? Okay, so the way it works for meat subscriptions is you're going to talk to me when you're getting ready to, like, go out of town or something. Okay. And um, we're going to make arrangements. Okay. Um, we how don't that's go that often. I just best. didn't want to miss. No, but if you're going somewhere, just please talk to me and try okay. to give me a two-week notice. Okay. Because I'll either try to get it to you ahead of time or I'll plan to put yours together for when you come back. Okay. Um you're not going to ever forfeit your meat subscription unless you okay. just don't talk to me and don't show up and a hundred okay. other things. But like, I don't see you doing that, you know? No, we're not gone that, that often, but we're going, we are going June, uh, was it fourth through the ninth? We'll be gone. So right. I don't know if that, that's in a couple of weeks here. Yeah. But so just tell me gonna what matter. you're going to do. And then if you let me, if you send me an email of your trip, usually okay. people will send me a vacation notice on an email. Just all the people, the old people know just to send me a notice. Okay. Because then if there's anything I need you to know or I need to ask you or whatever, okay. I can communicate it with you. Okay. That's okay. Fair. So this is what we're going to do. Yeah? Yes. Okay. And then um, everything else you're still sifting and sorting. Yes. Do you want this right now? I don't, I, th I have plenty right now, I think. Okay. I need Jaya, to get through what I have first. We're going to clear this. Let's put this back. She, we were just using it for a demonstration. So. I'm going to get through, but that helps me to understand cars. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think people don't even understand that, you know, when they say, oh, I only need two chicken a month for, for all the chicken I'm going to eat for the month. Um, no, you don't. Maybe if you're not just eating this, you know, I think a lot of people, you try to just maybe get some of the healthier meats and kind of keep your food, but you can't even... I don't even anymore. understand that. Like when people do stuff, when I have a shirt that says there is no 80, 20 rule. Yeah. So like if you're trying to do 80, 20, I don't understand what you're doing because you're poisoning yourself literally 20% of the time. So also I don't care cause it's none of my business, you know, but I'm, I just feel bad that people don't love themselves enough to know that they should, they're not, they're worth more than being poisoned a yeah. little bit sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, so we now now you get it, the pars. Yeah. Okay. Chicken is the hardest one because it's two birds at a time. So friends. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you like it, please share it with all your friends. And if you are interested in knowing my story or learning about the nonprofit work that I do, then please read my book. I'll make sure that there's a link in the notes. And while you're at our website, then you know, you could become a sustainer and help support regenerative agriculture. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time.